Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to get started. Ladies and gentlemen, George Widom. Hi, this is George Widom reporting for Widom's World. Well, it's not every day we get two questions that come in within a week of each other that are nearly identical, but it's actually happened. It's pretty creepy. <laughs> not really. It's actually really cool. Um, I had questions come in from Ted McAleer and Mike Martin about similar equipment and similar, actually the same equipment and pretty much the same question. So Ted's goes, okay, so I have this setup, a CAD E100S into a WA12 preamp that's made by Warm Audio. It's a very quiet chain to this point. The CAD and any other mic I pair with it sounds like it was made for this pre. From there, and here goes the question, into a DAC or a digital audio converter, you recommended, I did, the Lexicon Alpha. I have exactly the sound I want with the mic pre combo. I don't want to use any processing at all through the DAC. Thanks, George. So the question is kind of buried in there, but I'm thinking he's probably wondering, should I use a different audio interface? Sounds like what he's asking to me. Well, let's continue on with what Mike's asking, which kind of takes that to just a little bit more uh, focus. I just bought a warm audio WA-12. What a quinky dink. Only to find out that it doesn't have a micro USB out. Just XLR and quarter inch. So I learned of an inline adapter converter, question mark, to micro or mini USB from the XLR was doable. Visiting Guitar Center yesterday, they said I would be making a sow's ear out of a silk purse if I did. A standalone interface was what I really needed. Well, I wasn't about to shell out another $150 right after the $300 for the warm, so we talked more and came up with an XLR to 8th inch mini to fit my line in. Works fine as far as I can tell. So, if this subject hasn't been discussed before, what is the difference an interface makes and whether it goes into your standard USB or line in or whatever firewire, is the audio about the same? Is my line in digital, as I assume the CAD E100 microphone is? Wow, okay, we've got some layers of issues to sort out here. So let's start right in with, um, I think mostly focusing on Mike's question is just gonna in the process answer uh, whatever question Ted had regarding an audio interface, which is, um, he's saying a DAC, D-A-C, that actually means digital to analog converter. I think what he's more actually interested in is an analog to digital converter, taking the analog audio from the warm audio preamp and converting it to digital for the computer. In regards to Mike's question, he has a few questions or terms or things that are kind of all jumbled together here, a little bit confusing. So let's kind of to pick this apart a little bit. He says it doesn't have a micro USB out. Okay, so I guess he was expecting that the Warm Audio WA-12 was in itself an audio interface and that it would have its own USB jack that it could then be plugged into the computer. Well, the WA-12 is a really a professional piece of studio gear that was never intended to be plugged directly into a computer. Because of that, it doesn't have its own AD, analog to digital converter, or USB jack. So what you did come up with there, Mike, was a workable solution, taking the XLR out of the back of the warm audio WA-12 and sending it into the eighth inch jack of your computer. Now, you didn't say what kind of computer it is, so I'm guessing it's a PC. Most people with a Mac say they have a Mac, but just guessing. Um, the line in on just about any computer that I've used is not quite up to par to what it could be if you're using a standalone sound card slash USB audio converter. Why is that? Well, for one reason, the line in on your computer is made to be a very utilitarian device, not really made for professional audio. So that means the componentry in it is very, very inexpensive. Um, and just, it's not designed to be extremely accurate and very low noise. It's just designed for someone that wants to plug a cassette player into the computer and record or, you know, do some very, you know, 
amateur karaoke DJ kind of stuff. That said, if it sounds good, it is good. And I always say that. But if it does sound good, don't worry about it. It's probably just fine. I, for one, actually happen to be using the line in jack on my Mac Mini. Um, now, I don't use it for critical recording, um, but I am using it right now to record the audio that you hear on this uh, particular episode. So you're hearing the audio coming out of this beautiful Neumann TLM-103, which I must thank, by the way, Sennheiser for letting me demo this for the last couple of months. It's been awesome, but it's got to go back in the box and go back tomorrow. Um, But it's going through the mic into my mixer. I have an Allen Heath XB10. And then from an auxiliary send, it's going right into the Mac Mini line in. So the sound quality, depending on the computer you're using, can be quite usable and might be maybe just fine. But in most cases, I find that built-in sound card or sound device to be subpar and a little bit on the noisy side. And sometimes you might pick up some CPU whine or buzz or some kind of noise you don't want. So we generally try to avoid that if at all possible. Um, so... In regards to a good interface, well, I I do still like the Lexicon Alpha. I know it's only $60. I know it's got a built-in preamp. So if you're looking for something that's pure without a preamp built in, it's got one built in. But I'll tell you, it just seems to work really well for a lot of different people. Again, price being what it is, to do something much better than that, to really make an appreciable difference, you're going to be spending about 10 times more than what the Luxicon Alpha costs. Everything I've seen that has dedicated, balanced line-in, line-out of a professional quality is minimum $500. Henry Engineering, which makes stuff for radio broadcast, makes one. Yellow Tech also makes one. Um, The Apogee Duet, if you set it in line-in mode, is a true line-in, line-out device. But crazy as it sounds, all of these are $500 on or more. If you're really wanting to, to fine-tune your sound chain down to the tiniest detail, look into one of those devices. Otherwise, something like a Lexicon Alpha is going to do just fine. Um, one other little thing about Mike's question that was a little interesting. He said, is my line in digital as I assume the CAD E100 microphone is. The line in on your computer can be analog or digital. The line in on the Mac Mini that I happen to be using is both. It has contacts inside for an analog signal and it has an optical sensor to pick up an optical signal, which is digital. So it's actually both the input and output on on the Mac Mini can serve as a analog or a digital signal. So that's pretty amazing, one thing that's cool about it. So if you have a mic preamp or another device that has an optical output on it, it can be connected directly to the Mac Mini and bypassing any other middleman in regards to AD conversion and things like that. Um, But the microphone itself, the CAD E100 or any other microphone like this one that has an XLR analog output on it that needs to go into a mic preamp is an analog signal. This is not a digital microphone. TLM 103s do come in a digital form. It's called the 103D. And that has a the same jack on the bottom, or I think it's pretty much the same three pin XLR jack. But from there on, it's totally different. It goes out of the microphone through a digital cable, an AES EBU digital cable and then goes to a uh, special converter box that then interfaces with the rest of your studio. So there there are a lot of layers of what's going on in this question. But um, keep in mind, microphones are analog, and the computer only basically speaks digital. And something between the two has to do the conversion, and something has to preamplify the signal. So thanks for your questions, Ted and Mike. I really appreciate it. It's so fun that your questions came in with almost exactly the same topics on the same exact piece of equipment. What a trip. If you want to have your question answered on the show, I'd love to have it. Please send it in to widomsworld at edgestudio.com and I'll be glad to answer it on a future episode. And if your question needs more attention, faster attention, 
or it's just something that's very detailed, specific, and to your particular setup, um, it might be more suitable for a one-on-one. -on -one. And in that case, you can go to vostudiotech.com, click on the Get Support Now button at the top, or check out the services menu that's also up there and look at some of the services we have to offer. So thanks again for your time. I really appreciate it. This has been George Whittem with another episode of Whittem's World. See you next time.